Okay, so good morning again and welcome to the seminar class of today. Uh, we shall have two uh, exercise sheets and I will show the first one now. So this is the actually the um, exercise sheet from the previous class. So people see it on online for um, those of you who are offline and don't have it. I will just I think, give it to you if I have it. Okay, so it was uh, given on the previous one. If if not, just please uh, to take and also return one to me. Uh, so um, what we had uh, last time, we solved problem number one, which is the just one problem. Uh, then we start. We uh, from each of the other ones, we uh, solve just one. And uh, this is uh, with your exercises. And uh, finally, we had two which we didn't try. It's the um, number number seven and number nine. These are the ones which we didn't start do doing because uh, they are hard in a sense, either tedious, just or really say really uh, hard. So I will start with problem number nine. The statement is as follows. If some of you have solved it and wants to show the solution, then please inform me. If not, we'll just postpone it till the next class. Oh, it's, it's again. Yeah, again for, for one week, more one week, and then if, if now no one again solves it, I will just show the solution. Let's show it next, uh, no, next time. No, no, nobody wants to, to show it now. Okay, so for... Um, Problem number nine, we just uh, leave it for the next week. It's it's not so easy, so hard, by the way. It's just well, you need to think about a bit about that. And now um, for other ones, um, as we have this uh, for the maybe long one, uh, let's uh, try problem number seven. You want to do it, right? Yeah, I did it. Okay, so maybe then we'll do it as follows. You just do it on the whiteboard, and I will copy it in the on the on the, on the computer because I don't know how else we could do it. Well, okay. okay, so please, and then we'll I will start the. Journal. There are two points. You can choose one of them. Okay, so we are now discussing point 7b. Okay, then then it is not satisfiable. Empty clauses contradiction. Uh, we can do you have any like markers? Uh, I don't know, just try try to find it. It could be somewhere here. Or ask it in another class, I don't know. We shouldn't construct all clauses. Uh, if we obtain the empty clause then we already are in the situation of contradiction. We don't need to continue continue saturation because we have a contradiction. So, okay, I'm writing the R implies not B. I still want them. There are no potential pass, so and they have to erase it. Okay, so probably okay. they just grab some of them from our class. S and R and R or P. And Q implies S implies R. Okay, so this is the problem. By the way, for those who are in Teams, I will put in chat the, uh, the problems. This is here practice problems. 
No, it's first order task is the second one. Okay. Uh, first, this one. Okay, so this is the formula itself. Okay. So we need just to simplify it. And uh, this goes to this conjunction. Yes. Okay, then we write this as a list of clauses. So we'll just write them down also here. Junction. It's okay. No, no, it's, it's, it's point B. It's B. It's at, at three, seven B. So, one moment, uh, and we find uh, not R and P. Uh, so, not R is here, so we need to. Yes, so from the Two and five, we can re no. Uh, we resolve S, right? And we get no, just there is no S. So yeah, S, not S, and then we have S. Yes, yeah, you're right. 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 Two and five? Two and no, five. It's, it's not R. S is just resolved. Yes. Okay. No, have S, just have R, we have P. P oh, is no, by resolution. No, no, no. Say. How did you get P? It's R or P, right? Yes, so we got not R, yes, mm -hmm. and then we got P using 6. Is it correct that from the second and the third we have not R? We so we have S and not S, it's always true, so we have not R. Uh -huh. Yeah, we have like not R or S or not S or not R, so it's one always, so it's not R. 
uh -huh. yeah, so we have no not R, so then P, and then we got uh, P, yes, we P, and we have Q and R. Q or R. Q or R, it's like, yes, from one, we have Q or R, Q or R, and then using not R, we get Q. So we have, uh, now we have R is 0, eight, and the Q is 1. Is Perma from the first one? We, we know that we have only P, then P and not P is always 1, so we, we've got Q and R. Ah, and nice. also we have not R is mm -hmm. only Q. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and the last one, we need S. S we get from... I suppose. How do we achieve to get Q from O and R? We have no R. Yeah, we can get S from the servers by Q and not R. Because we already have Q and not R. Yeah, yeah, we got not S. S and S is zero. So let's just check. Uh, here we have uh, Q, so it's true, satisfy. Here we have just not R, satisfy. Uh, here it's uh, not Q. So, right? not Q, zero. R is zero. S is zero. Strange. Maybe we made a mistake. Uh, so what happened? Well, why not S? Because with the seven, we have uh, we have Q, and we have not R. So we put okay. not S, and S is zero. Yes, but uh, what what fails? Which clause fails? This one. Not Q or R or S, yes. right? So zero, zero, and not Q is also zero. But this means that you could resolve and get uh, false, then, right? Yes. So it means it's not satisfiable, right? Yeah. No. So you obtain these guys, and then you can resolve. So first, yeah, let's let, let, let just double check everything. So these are the, the original clauses, right? Okay. Yes. So now you resolve two and five, and you get not R. Okay. Now you resolve this not R with six, which is R of P. We, yes, we can take as uh, third. Clauses use Q, use not R. Ah, yes. We have, we have S. We have S, and now we can resolve it against this clause. We have S and not S, so it's not satisfiable. Yep, so then we will have, uh, yeah, using this clause, we can resolve it with Q, you get R or S. Using not R, you get S, and you get S and not S, and you get empty, it's not satisfiable. Right, so we obtain contradiction. Maybe there could be a faster way to obtain contradiction here. But uh, they took a got uh, empty clause, which means they're not satisfied. Uh, uh, fourth and sixth. Yeah, if you... Res make what? Us yeah, four, four and six make us uh, it, it, it immediately empty, right? So if you uh, resolve this, okay, let's try these. So this, you say that there's four and there is six. What can you do here? You will get, you resolve it like this, you will, no, you will get just P or not P. And this is not, is, is there, no, no, it's okay. Well, what does it mean here? You say that it should be either not R or not P, which is fine, or you have R or P. So it just says that R and P should be, uh, so they, uh, at least one of them should be zero, and at least one of them should be one, but it's, it doesn't make a contradiction. So, contradiction is obtained only by long, longer way. Questions, comments? Because I obtained contradiction. Because. Yeah. yeah, because then you have S and not S, and you apply a trivial resolution to them. And they just make you empty clause. Empty clause is empty disjunction. Empty disjunction is. False because disjunction is about uh, possibilities. You add new things. Uh, it's satisfiable that this one is uh, one, true, so we have all of them false, so it's not satisfiable. Uh, 
Question. So, um, recombination of four and six, they don't uh, give. Uh, no, they don't give. They don't give contradiction because say if r is zero and p is one, they're okay. Uh, yeah. Because they they. they Yeah, resolution is good in the sense that when you apply it formally, and an algorithm could do it, not only a human, uh, is the good thing is that it, it mm, you don't need to think about the, say, informal semantics, informal meaning of the connectors. You just apply formal rules. And uh, because otherwise you can easily get um, loss in, you can get confused with, uh, say, conjunction, disjunction, how negation works, stuff like that, but here do only formal things. In classical logic, it's easy. Okay. So those, eh? uh, yeah. If if you wish to, do we need to to do seven A or not? How do you think? Okay. If you wish to do seven A, let's do seven A because probably the answer will be different. Okay. And I will write it down on the whiteboard also. So we have what P or U and R and what Q or R or P and U or R and what Q or P and This closest, so we have not P here, not P here, so we can like even these two closest to make like CNA. Yeah, so we obtain this is not exactly CNA because we have two clauses with uh, conjunction and disjunction, but we can reunite it, and these clauses are going to by distributivity, they're going to be not P or and what, what's coming next. Uh, it's like not not P or like Q or R and R Q and R yes Q and R and uh, not Q and not R it is always zero so the whole clause is depend on not P. So yeah, so the, the, these two, what I did in blue, these two clauses, they are just uh, equivalent in conjunction. They're equivalent to p. No, 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 not. So not p, yeah, right? Not p. Negation of p. So it's like all of this is equivalent to p, not p. Yes. So we have uh, like the basic clauses. Not p is not Q uh, or R or not B, Q or R and not Q or P. Yeah, like 
So from first and uh, first we get not q. Yes. And from uh, let's make it five. From five and uh, three uh, we get r. Okay, um, I will also draw it here. Yes. Yeah. So what are the what are we going to do? So we first we have not p. Second, we have uh, not Q or R or not P. Third, we have uh, Q or R. Fourth, we have uh, not Q or P. By uh, one and four, uh, we get uh, not Q. By five and three, this is five. We get R. What? Oh, well, Q zero. Q zero. Yes. R one. Okay. So Q is zero. R is one. And then we get this one. Uh, uh, P zero because the first one is. Yes. So we have isolated. Yeah, all the three variables are isolated, and we can check that uh, this is a satisfying assignment, right? So yes, we need to check this. Not P is one. Uh, R is one. Yes. Uh, R is one satisfy and Q is one is satisfiable. So, uh, this is satisfiable formula. Okay, yeah, the formula is satisfiable, and uh, this is the solution for this problem. Okay, so thank you. Okay, so for other problems, uh, I don't think that we should uh, basically solve all of them, right? So it uh, could be not interesting. First, I would like to ask you of other problems. So except for, of course, problem seven, which we have considered right now, and except for problem nine, which we postponed, do you wish to to hear the solution of one concrete some some of the problems? Uh, First, first problem was uh, in previous class. So we, we yeah. So today we discussed problem seven. Problem one was discussed in the first class. Uh, so problem nine is postponed. We're not discussing it today because we decided to decide discuss the next class. The question we do is as follows: From all other problems, do you wish to say here the solution? You want six C, right? Does anyone want to show 6C? I did it, but I don't know if it is true. Okay, we could check it together. Anyone any else? Anyone else would wish us to show? No? Okay, let's do 6C, as it uh, causes some prob probable trouble. Okay, but uh, anyway, if, if, if not you, then me, because nobody else will bid it for that. Oh, you will do it. Okay. So it's 6C. Let me do it like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, right? P implies Q implies not P implies not Q uh, sorry. implies not R. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, it's not a, it, so. The, the question here is to translate it into both forms, mm -hmm. and this is neither a CNF nor a DNF, so you can do it anyway. Yeah, so the, the yeah, or you can do it just by I don't know truth table. Well, no, no, a truth table here will consist consist of eight lines only. Yeah. So this you can do just a full CNF, совершенно form.
Okay, what's happening? So we we'll gradually replace it with right. So okay. So we we did the we took the this first thing. Okay, and uh, I'm trying to do something with this. So this is going to be equivalent to uh, not P or Q implies not P. And this is equivalent to a P and not Q or not P. So next we consider so the global formula, say let's call it A. A is equivalent to P and not Q or not P. All of this guy implies not Q. This implies not R. And this all implies R, right? So now we take this. And it's going to be a negation of P and not Q are not P or negation of Q and this is equivalent to what? To yep, so it's no well, something better uh, happened in there don't be two negations. It's not P or Q. Uh -huh. and P uh, why and Q it should be or Q oh did you negate it was why I don't understand so we negated the first one but uh, the second one is or not Q it should be or not Q So now A is equivalent to, to what? So this guy should imply not R, and this guy should imply R, right? Again, here we should negate all this stuff. Or negate R. And already we can see that, well, we will, of course, we will finalize this now, but already we see that we are doing something quite an optimal, because we uh, negate things many times, flip and flip, and it's also prone to errors, but okay, let us finish. By now, I think, I hope that all of you are checking that everything is fine, right? So that. Normal 
negation, 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 negation. Yeah. Just we can learn. Yeah, we can calculate, but no, no, let, let's finish how you did it. So let's just finalize. Because otherwise we'll get. So now we have to what do we do? We have to negate all this stuff, right? So and A is equivalent to the negation of this. Yep, so this should imply R. So it's a negation. Ah, well, do you mean about what I'm writing down? Maybe I'm mistaken. Uh, yeah, I mean, the last line it is a P or not Q, but in the previous... Ah, I see. Yeah, it's just uh, my mistake. I should I should put, put end here, right? You're, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah it's just a mistake. It's a previous line. It's like this. Yeah, it should be like this. Oh, oh. Okay, it's yeah, just a misprint. I just, I just wanted to copy this formula. It's just, uh, it's just a misprint. Thank you. And now we negate it, right? So we. Okay, so now we do the denegation. It should be easy. So it's. Right? And it seems that here we are actually at quite a... doesn't it trivialize right now? It's something that... Uh, something and R or R. No? Yes. Shouldn't it be just R? Yes, so... It's just R. So it should be just R. Because you say it's something or R and R or R. It's just R. And just let, let's look at look at the just let's look at the original formula to make to make sure that it that we're not mistaken. So suppose R is true. Then uh this uh, so I will I will return to this formula here. So the original formula was uh, here, right? So, okay, it's of the form something like B implies not R, implies R. Well, B is all this pesky thing on there. There's no, well, there's some B prime because it's other B we introduced over. Uh, so, um, suppose R is true. Then this is... Uh, True, right? Mm -hmm. Now suppose R is false. Then not R is true. So if R is false, so okay, let me write it down because it's a, R equals one, then A equals one, right? Because just something implies R. So if R equals zero, then uh, B implies not R equals one because uh, the purpose uh, and then we have a which is one to zero which is zero so then a equals zero and this means that a has the same value that r and that means that it's just r 
and this gives you the solution to both uh, six, uh, so for both DNF and CNF, because just the literal, it's both a CNF and a DNF. So nothing. To so this is a problem which looks uh, so exactly a mathematical joke. Uh, the problem which looks something like the hardest in the list, but uh, really it's, it trivializes. You don't need to. And, uh, Sorry, and by the way, uh, let, let me just, I will answer your question in a moment. Just one comment be before I forget, uh, that uh, this actually, if you did it not in the way you did it, that from uh, from deep to shallow, but if you did it from the top to the bottom, it's so easier. it's yeah. easier, yeah. So if you start, if you started doing this, uh, just, so you, you first decompose the inner implications, right? Mm -hmm. And this led to all these uh, things which we had in the, in the line, where we had to flip the negations many times. So for this inner formula, we actually flipped, we applied De Morgan enormous number of times we have flipped the negations, which is not convenient. So here the better solution would be to just to try to decompose out implication first, and then you, I think you, your question comment was about that. Yes, yes, yes. So we'll stop in the beginning after we get that some things uh, and are and for are yeah, so if you try to decompose out implication, you will get something like, uh, so you will get or R, and here you should uh, negate all this stuff. And how to negate an uh, implication, you should uh, postulate its conclusion, and you should uh, falsify its premise. So this will be a negation of something, something, something. And immediately you see that this is R. Well, actually, we in, our, in the other solution, we had it here. So this is the neg negation, and this is R. So this is our formula B, actually. But if we started from the, from the, not from inner formula to outer, but from the outer formula to inner ones, we could have obtained this immediately. So which, uh, immediately we see that. So this is this law, which is in Russian called the one of the laws of Boolean algebra that uh, say B and C disjunction C as the same as just C, right? You can prove it, say, by uh, what is the relativity, for example? What is B and C or C? It's uh, uh, B or C and uh, C or C. Or you can check it by just wooden tables, it's a standard thing, but uh, beware of such stuff. Here, some of the problems could may lead to such as two realizations, it's okay. Okay, so anything else you wish to discuss? Yes, uh, the fifth one. The fifth, uh, for 5b you mean, right? Because 5a was discussed from last time. Okay, let's do 5b. Okay. Uh, okay. So I will write it down here. Five B, it's A and Q. Okay, moment. Okay, people are here, right? Uh, A and Q implies not P, implies P implies not Q implies A. And the question is that we should obtain a formula which is A of P and Q in order to make this a tautology. So this should be generally true. And here there are two solutions. The one uh, sort of, well, uh, we could put a more general question to find all possible non-equivalent A's which make it true. So there is a trivial solution. If we just want to find an A, just by one glance at the formula. Let's try to find it. Well, we can it and then... Yeah, you know, this is the this is the say standard solution, which means that you will do it properly as a good student. But uh, there is sort of cheating here. You can do it just one one glance without any computations. How can you make this a tautology? We need to make uh, the first clause is uh, zero, and then... Uh, okay, yeah, it's making the first clause zero is a hard way. Maybe we can do it uh, somehow with uh, the 
No, no, again, it, it, these are all good solutions, but they're not trivial. I, this is this no, no, problem. Uh, I mean, uh, like, not the hard way, because the easy way. Yeah, the, no, no, the, it's even easier. It's even easier. Is yeah, very guess. Well, well, there was another solution, which I think. How to make this true? Just, just, just from scratch. How to make it true? Yes. The easiest way, just okay, just say it. Let A be just uh, constant one. For example, A equals I don't know P or not P. And that's it. <laughs> this is this is the trivial answer, right? How do we understand that A must one? No, it's not must. And so you see that is, how how is the problem posed? It says construct a formula A such that this is a tautology. There are not. This is not the unique solution. We just guess it. Okay, what is the easiest way to make an implication true? It is to make its conclusion true, right? On the right side, was a cliche. All right. Yes. The conclusion again is an implication, right? How to make it true? Again, we make the, the conclusion true, and the conclusion is just a, and we have full power over a. It's our decision how to make. So, and therefore, if we make A true, and we can make it just a P or not P, or just we, maybe we have constant one, making A a tautology makes all these formulas also a tautology. It's true for any P you are. So this is the trivial way, and this means that uh, the good way of posing this problem that let's find all the solutions, all the possible variants for A, of course, up to equivalence. Because even for truth, there are infinitely many ways of representing it. This is not interesting. It's interesting to have another A, which is not a tautology itself, but which makes this tautological. And for this uh, extent, we need to simplify it, right? So th this is, yeah. So here, this is the easy solution here. And uh, so finding all the solutions implies some uh, simplification. <laughs> Or it's just just a random tautology. Okay. It's for the case if we don't have constant one in our language. Mm -hmm. So how do we say? Well, what what do we have in our language? We basically don't know. So it's... okay, then we um, go for what we say that. Uh, let's simplify. Just open up the brackets. So this should be positive. Uh, this should be negative, right? So how do we negate the implication? We should make this true, this false, so it means that it should be A or uh, and Q. A and Q uh, and P, right here. Or the negation of this. So again, we need to negate this and make this true. So this is going, the negation of this clause is going to be what? P and Q, right? Uh, or A, right? So uh, please check, I, I could make mistakes. This is the technical uh, questionnaire where we have many hard things like that. Okay, and now what can we do next? We can eat. Uh, yeah, we can eat the first one because if we have again, we have this uh, uh, say A or B, A and B or B, and this is equivalent to B, right? So this is just equivalent to A or P and Q. And now, as this is a very easy formula, we can now see how can we make it a tautology. So the first variant, which we know, is that just A is 1. We just make A always true, and the disjunction is going to be true, right? But also there is a second non-equivalent thing. How can we make it true? Uh, not uh, P and Q, right? So A is negation of P and Q. So actually, what, what happens here? There is, there is a disjunction, so in order to make it true, we need to make each disjunct true, right? 
<coughs> no, no, sorry. At least one disjunct. True. So the second disjunct makes one line in your truth table true. When both P and Q are true, then P and Q is true. And in this, only this line, A could be false there. It could be true, it could be false. But on other lines, A should be true. Because this part on the right does not guarantee us anything else. So if at least one of them is false, B should, A should be true. Otherwise, we fail to make it. And there are two, pro, two, two solutions. They are here, up to equivalence. So these are the, all, all the solutions. This is the uh, so, sort of, well, good, good solution. So, well, it's not, not that guessing. We did it by uh, just standard tricks. We uh, simplified the formula and we understood where A is there. And second, we obtained all the solutions, but not only one. So it's more say. Uh, on the, this formula A and B or B, why you have written A? Ah, uh, no, because it's B. Because here it is B. No, no, uh, or B, and there must be also or A. No. no. So, 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 the, you don't mean this equivalence, A and B or B equals B? Yeah. It's an equivalence, it's true. We can check it by truth table. If B is true, then the, the right hand side is true, right? And I understand that uh, you imply that B uh, equals to P and Q, yes? Yes. But on, in the original formula, we also have OR A. Yes, we have OR A, and this OR A is, is kept here. It's, it's still there. So we we'll replace this with this, with B. And A is here, it's copied here, so we didn't change it. A is still there. Yeah, we'll do where? We'll do also with the first and the second one. And there will, there will be A, yeah, so it's, you can do it with this. So formally speaking, yeah, we do the following equivalent. So we have A and B, or B or A, which is equivalent just to B or A. Okay. okay. So I think we um, we have half an hour, and we want to at least start the second exercise sheet. So let's first, uh, let, if you have any other questions, let's maybe discuss it next time, because otherwise we're just out of the time frame. We have solved all the interesting questions of this test, actually. Um, so um, I will this also show you the next uh, thing. Okay, please. And I will show it on the, on the screen and also uh, on the... So these are the first order logic predicate logic exercises in, the, in here. Yeah. So I also show them on the screen and in the class we have them. And the link is in the chat. So okay, again we will have some decisions to make. Probably we from one and two will show only one of them and uh, next we uh, probably will most of them will be postponed to the next class because we're running out of time maybe we'll also do three and everything else will go to the next class okay from one which do you want to to, to discuss now see all right okay so i will back to my journal and now we are going to first order, and we're going to be one C. Okay, so one C is as follows. So it's for all x, uh, p of x implies q of x. Um, conjunction does uh, 
does not exist x. Q of x, then for all y, not P of y. So the question is whether this formula is generally true. And unfortunately, here there is no, say, trivial baseline solution, like uh, just consider all truth assignments or something like that. Because meaning generally true should mean that it's true for all possible. But now here it's unary predicate, by the way, I'll, maybe I will show you the decision algorithm in a bit. So before the way do it. Okay, this here. Uh, after we do it informally. Because here we actually have uh, we actually have finite models here. Well, I will I will show you how it for unary predicates only. But let's see informally. Now, how do you think? Is it generally true or not? Oh yeah, here you should perform just. Uh, logical reasoning, right? So uh, we have premise, we have conclusion, we suppose that the premise is true, we want to justify the conclusion. What does the premise say? It says that for any x, p of x implies q of x. Or by our law, we, have, we can say that for all x, um, not p of x or q of x. Right? Uh, it's much like what we have here for all y p of not p of y. But again, could there, but also we say that that does not exist in x such that q of x. So we can say like this, that this, what does mean that x does not exist? It means that for all x, not q of x, right? And for all x this, for all x that, we can make it like this. It's for all x, not p of x, or q of x, and not q of x, right? And then we apply something like resolution. From it, this is follows that for all x, not p of x. But then for all y, not p of y, because we can just rename these variables on the quadrant. Is generally true. Yes. So um, this is the reasoning. Fortunately, if we have um, only unary predicates, uh, so yeah, wh wh where are these x and y's taken from? Well, x and y's are taken from some big set which we call domain, which is called D. D is an arbitrary set, so we do not know what is D, and the interpretations of the predicates P and Q are just functions from d to zeros and ones, right? So for each x and y or something like that, we uh, have uh, predicates which uh, make them true or false, right? So d is domain? D is domain, like yes. So set. yes, it's the universal set. So it's uh, it's uh, the set of all, uh, the set of the, uh, where the, our objects live. Yes, yes. So under the quantifier, under this for all x, we have some uh, formulae, and we can consider them as just propositional formulae. So, I mean, it's the method, the method, but yes, it's the same. It's not a method. It's the rule. We just it's it's a sound rule, right? It's correct rule. Mm -hmm. 
that can apply it everywhere. Because the meaning of the connectives is classical. Conjunction, disjunction, implication is classical. And what if you could, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't understand, but we, we came to this and uh, did we come to some conclusion from what we Ah, we came to this conclusion, but this is the same as here. It's, it's our conclusion. This 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 conclusion is the same as this one. It is it's what we needed. So we suppose the premise of the implication, we came to the conclusion, we proved it. Ah, so, so we kind of simplified the left part yes. and came to the same conclusion. So if this is true, this yes. is true also. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. Uh -huh. Oh, what here we don't use the term tautology, we use the term generally true formula. But it's the same as being a tautology. No, no, but the, the, this is just we say for all. So we say that this should be not just true for a concrete X, but for all X's. And saying that something is true for all X is the same as saying true for all Y's, right? It doesn't matter what name it has. Because it's for all, it's universal. Yeah, because the domain is the same. They all range over the same domain. It's, an, by the way, an interesting question. There are logics of uh, first order logics with different source of variables. So there are different domains and different, say, variables range over different domains. This is, for example, useful in, I don't know, school geometry, where you have, say, some letters ranging over points some letters ranging over lines, some letters ranging over planes. Uh, not just not to make the things just not to overcrowd the syntax. We don't have these languages here, but it, it, it's possible. It's possible. It, by the way, expressible because you can just um, add a predicate which marks the sort of the variables. Okay. You can you know, a predicate say x is a plane or something like that. But here we have only one sort, so we have only one domain. And here we are in the situation, by the way, where um, the a model can be made finite. Why? Well, because here actually all the points of the model, all the x, y's are independent. We don't have any binary or ternary relations. We don't have any relations between them. We just have p and q, which are properties of them. And therefore, if, uh, if two elements have the same properties, so the same truth values of uh, p and q, then they are indistinguishable. They just may look at as the same element. We don't have any way to distinguish them. And therefore, we can actually say that, the say for x, we have just p and q. And we can say that in our domain, possibly, there are only four elements. So this is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, oh, sorry, 1, 1, yes. So, Actually, we can say that here we have just four elements, x1, x2, x3, and x4. And this reduces our formula actually to uh, a Boolean formula. Because when we say for all x, p of x, it's actually just equivalent to saying, um, I don't know, um, P of x1, so yeah, it's just even not, if it's even easier. So, uh, when we are saying, uh, how can we say it? We can say that um, for all x, some formula is true, if and only if it's true for any. Of these, right? So each, if you have a finite model, then each quantifier gets replaced just by conjunction or disjunction, right? Because if you have only two binary predicates, a unary predicates, sorry, then the only possible, there are four possible situations for them to be true. And this means that any point in our model is indistinguishable with one of these four, right? And therefore, a universal quantifier is just a big conjunction. And for existential, it's the same, but here you should put disjunction. And then just compute your formula. 
because it's the, the, it's the thing that if you have only unary predicate, you can actually think that your model is finite just by enumerating possible values for this predicate. And this, that's why if you have, I mentioned this at the lecture, that if you have a, um, a, only unary predicates, then your uh, first order logic is decidable by reduction to a Boolean logic. But it happens only if you ha don't have binary predicates. If you have at least one binary predicate, everything ruins because there are, you cannot do this finest thing. For example, uh, about the binary predicate. Suppose you have um, a predicate which says less just R of X, Y, meaning X is strictly less than Y. What does this mean? And suppose you say something that it is transitive. So for all x, y, z, uh, x less than y and y less than z, then x less than z. And it's irreflexive. Irreflexive that for all x, y. So for all, OK, no, sorry. So. Um, for all x, x is not le x less x, and it's say I don't know. Yeah, okay, it's, it's okay, it's, it's not. Then you, if you have a non, an, um, um, and you say that it is also serial that for any x exists y such that y x less than y. If you make these uh, assumptions, you write this formula. Uh, then uh, you enforce your model to be infinite, right? So this is a satisfiable thing, but uh, uh, it, it, the only way you can satisfy it is to satisfy it on an infinite d domain. Because uh, if you have one element, and you always say, it says in the preamble here that it's non-empty domains, the domains should be non-empty. Uh, if you have one element, then there exists an element which is greater, and it is by irreflexivity is not the same element, right? Yes, it should be infinite. So this formula is satisfiable, but it can be satisfied only on infinite domains, so infinite models, and this is important. And therefore, you have unsettability because you cannot range over infinite models. You cannot just brute force over them. Okay, so in, in first order logic, you can enforce your system to be infinite. Without the last law, it could be finite. You could have only one element and it could be false. Yeah, so. Now, I think even without, yeah, without the last law, yeah, you can just have a finite. So you see that you can just take it, uh, this R could be just false everywhere. And no elements are comparable. You have some, say, 10 elements, and they're incomparable, they're very reflexive, it's transitive. And, but, so. No, it's important that you have here. I think that by chance we solved problem three right now. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's Q there instead of R. You can just compare them. model. <laughs> Okay, then we solve problem three. Let's solve something for problem two, and we are done for today. And everything else will go for the home task. Okay. So from two, which one would you would you wish to solve? Okay, let's solve B. B is the easiest one, by the way. Okay, let's do B. Uh, exists x, exists y, a P of x, and not P of y. Again, by the way, it's decidable because this is a unary predicate. Could this be possible? It's like P and not P, probably false, right? Yes, but the X and the y. There are different X and Y's, right? So it can be false. Yeah, is it satisfiable? What is the domain? How many elements do you need in the domain for this to be satisfied? To satisfied? Q 
two elements, right? So let's call them A and B. So let's call this A. Let's call this B. Let's say P of A is true. P of B is false. So this is the domain. Okay. And this formula is true here, right? Because there exists an X and exists a Y where X is A, Y is B, such that P of X is true, P of Y is false. So such is satisfiable. Okay, and since we have some time, let's uh, uh, also solve problem four, just to end today's class. So here we have this domain. Well, it's called M here, but I use D it's by chance. It's the natural numbers. Uh, so, yeah, it doesn't matter for these particular tasks whether natural numbers include zero. There are different uh, thoughts about that, but here it doesn't matter. And you say that R of AB is that uh, A less than B. How can you express uh, the idea that V equals U plus one? So V is the next after U, if you have only order of only less. Yeah, we will ask write a formula which expresses that V is the next to you. And you, you know that you have a predicate being uh, less. Okay, so this formula, we call it phi. So it says that uh, first, uh, R of UV, which means that U should be less than V, right? And there does not exist such W, which is in between. So here is U, here is V, so here are the natural numbers. And there should not be such W, which infringes here. So it does not exist a W such that R of what? UW? RW. RW, right? So this is the answer to this question. Okay, we solved also this. So other problems will go for your, say, home thinking. Um, any questions, comments by now? Concerns about the first task where we have this situation when for each x not e from x uh, implies uh, for each uh, y not e. For, for oh, could you write this down on the blackboard? Oh, sorry, but otherwise I just uh, incomprehensible. Oh, this is the markers here. Some of them right. So we had uh, in the end, we simplified the left part, and we had something like this. Yes. Yes. This. And uh, uh, what does generally true mean that in any case, like any combination of realization of x and y? We have uh, one for this formula. Uh, yes, but how do we interpret the quantifier? So that was, let's see on the left hand side. For all x, not p of x. We interpret p somehow. So on some x, is, if some elements is true and some elements is false. What does for all x, not p of x mean? It means that if we take any element and call it x, then p should be false on that element, right? What is the what is the meaning of not for, for all? For all x, something means that we take any element, and this something should be true on it. So not p should be true, p should be false. Uh, what does the right hand side mean? It means that for all y, something something. Or it means that if we take any element and call it y. 
then if for this element, not P of Y should be true. So it's the same. You see that X and Y are not parameters of this formula. They are bounded by the quantifiers. They're just names, so it's... Uh... So does it mean that they have the same values when they are substituted? Yeah, but no, no, when, you, when you evaluate for all, you don't evaluate for a concrete X. You, you have to do... Uh, and, and you have to go through all possible values of X. You take each, each possible... It's an infinite procedure, it's not an algorithm. But uh, say, in the mind, you can uh, understand it. So, for example, there are natural numbers. So you need to check each natural number. For each natural number, you have to check that not P is true. And on the other side, you have to do absolutely the same. But you call it not uh, X, but you call it Y. But it doesn't matter. It's the same uh, procedure. So you, how do you do You assign X equals 0, check. X equals 1, check. X equals 2, check. And infinitely many times. On the right, you have to say y equals zero. Check y equals one. Check. So, but it's the same. It's you just call it y, but it's uh, mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't have a value globally. It's it has to run along all the possible values. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a fixed value, and therefore it is the same. And if you put existential quantify again, what does it mean that there exists x such as p of x? This means that uh, uh, there you can pick an element, call it x, and it should satisfy p. It is the same as him exists y, p of y. Because, again, you take this element, call it y, and stuff like that. So it's, this is called alpha conversion, I think. It's the renaming of bounded variables. So in you, it's, we didn't go into these details. This is all syntax. But the idea is that you have free variables and bounded variables. So the variables which are swabodni svezane, the variables which are under quantifiers, they are bounded. And they, are, when you evaluate the formula, you don't give them concrete values. They just run along all the domain and check for any of, check for existence of, of universal quantification. And the parameters, real parameters, they are free variables. They're not under quantifiers. And then you cannot rename them because they, they have their concrete values. A good question. Thank you. OK, more questions? Excuse comments? Me. Yeah. Uh, can, can you explain how we went from the third line? To in, the, in this proof, right? Yeah, yeah. From the third, one, two, three, so from uh, this hop, right? Yeah, yeah. Resolution rule. If we have, uh, say, not A or B, and we have not B, and then we can imply... Oh, I got it, sorry. Not Thank A. You. It's only one direction, but we need to prove it in one direction here. Okay, thank you. So formally applying resolution would just add this here. It's it's a sort of CNF, and we add it, but here we just uh, just apply it as a rule of inference. So it should be the implication. Mm 